All right, all right, all right. Crazy Legs, Caliban Arcan here live on IOPS.ca here at the James Smith Hockey Tournament. Feature matchup here. We got the PBC and Eagles. Taking on Yellow Quill. Yellow Quill in the blue. PBC and Eagles are in the white. And it looks like Yellow Quill has four guys on the bench plus coach. It'll be a long battle, a long morning here for Yellow Quill. Testing. But they do look confident. Do we have uh, nine guys strong here? No updated thing? There you go. Who else? Well, we don't have Yellow this Quill. This is, uh, we don't have one for Yellow Quill, but I do have it here. So. Here, All right, you guys, we're back here again here for game number two here live, day two. Uh, the James Smith Strong and Resilient Tournament here in Saskatoon and Treaty 6. We'll welcome you back and hope you're enjoying the live stream as well. The talents of Cal Arcan, Willis, jean Ray, and myself, Nathan Arias. Where did I send you? Yellow Quill, send you the roster. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So we got the yellow quill looking like the goaltender number 33, Kobe Clark. Dustin Parallettes out there, number 16. He's a notable import. Dustin Parallettes. But now, what a playing shot. for his home community. So you got um, Dustin and Dalen. We they a score. Quick goal there, number 16. Yeah, that's uh, Dustin. Oh, Parallet, the Parallet boys. Yeah, these guys can play. Not too bad, not too bad. PBCN going to be one of the favorites to win this tournament. Because the scoring has started off early. Yellow first. Quill, shocking the boys here. Again, only nine guys on the bench. Well, four went, on the bench, plus the five. to uh, Armin last night. Wow, I don't know about them, but I know uh, one of the scorekeepers down there, a little worse for wear, is he took in some indigenous cowboy entertainment with Armin Duck Chief here for two nights here in Saskatoon. Is he here again tonight? No. Yeah. Nice at the Ramada, eh? He's at the Ramada, a sold-out Ramada Auditorium. Yellow Quill shoots it into PBCN. That's stopped. We're going to have a... Face off PBC in the area. One nothing, 22 minutes and 50 seconds. The first, we are early on in this game. And we're going to be here all day for day number two at the Mirrorless Belcher, not Bueller. No. Belcher. Belcher. Mirrorless Belcher. Belcher. Community builder. Tomato, I've seen a, seen a picture, picture of him out in the hallway there, oh, really? gentlemen. I also see a lot of the Husky players walk around here as this is their training facility. Yeah, they also have, uh, you know, like when we have these tournaments here, any any events here, you, you see the they have the previous Huskies. So um, they come and skate. One nothing PBCN, Candice. It's uh, alumni. They have alumni games. So anybody who's former Huskies, they come out and skate. And yeah, yeah we've seen the Huskies, men's and ladies. Team. That one's going to find the back of the net there. His parallel will score on a little tricky wrister right to the corner there. Kind of went up the glove and in. Reminds here. me of my prime there when I used to shoot like that on the Keegan corner. Henderson uh, couldn't control that. And Parallet with two goals. Dustin Parallet. He's the centerman and walking in again is Parallet. Taking another opportunity on a shot there. Uh, Dustin, uh, when Yellow Quill is not in these tournaments, he's usually picked up for, for teams as well. Uh, good uh, rock solid uh, forward. So do you have to play for your reserve if it is entered? If your in the team term? is team? entered, one of the rules, and it's a tough one, 
uh, you know, for, for certain players, maybe your team, uh, maybe you got four lines already and you're still a decent player, but you can't enter because your team is entered. So I don't know how they get around that one. We enter another team from your reserve. Well, they can enter another team, but a lot of times you don't have the, the players, right? Yeah, that's true. Enter two. That is true. So if you're out, you're out. It's unfortunate because I see it in a few different situations where, uh, you know, you got decent players. They don't play with their res team, but they can't play because of the rules. Yeah. Got to play for your team first. So the advantage is to those players where their team doesn't enter a lot. So they end up being on the unrestricted free agency player teams. A lot of times you see you know, the, the Paralit boys up for grabs. Is that the one who played with the uh, Prince Albert Raiders? Fair enough? I'm not sure if Dustin did. I know he played uh, some some junior. One of them played in the dub, pretty sure. Yellow you know, Quill. I know they had their two. own. Uh, they had their own team there for a while. They were sporting those uh, Joes. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. them. Yeah. Joe's uh, uh, that the old Pat the ribside there. Yeah, them. what's it called? I know, I know what you're talking about. The Joe's one. They had some good jerseys there. Yeah. Dennis Parrott and the boys. Honestly, man, I was thinking of creating an eye off ski, man. Eye off hockey. Yeah. Uh, very expensive That's to very. be an owner of any hockey team, no matter what league it is. Equipment wise, sticks are incredibly expensive these days. There's a shot and a goal there by number four for PBCN. That is Riker Seawop. Walks over the line, has a wrister. And oh, PBCN is on the blue or the white. White. Oh, my bad. There's Franklin Cook on the defense, sporting the big beard here. I had a little brief combo with him, or longtime uh, hockey grinder. Hasn't seen him on skates for a while, and here he is back. And he told me last year I seen him out in Prince Albert. And, uh, you know, he's kind of a heavy set guy. He plays a lot of senior. And look at him, number five. Got a good stride, got a good skate, good shot. And he said he's getting in shape. Main thing is be getting out there skating. Yep. Getting out there skating. He's like uh, a fire hydrant out there, boy. If you run into Franklin and for a big guy, he can move pretty good. Watch him on D here. It's three on one situation. And Franklin was down trying to make the block with another goal there. A natural. No, no. That'd be Dalton, Pierlet. No, and yeah, Dalton scores. Yeah. Number nine. Yellow Quill. Yellow Quill. That was three to one. Thir 18 minutes remaining. Short bench for the Parallel boys in Yellow Quill as they're attacking the scoreboard here. Three to one now. A short bench. And let's see if they can hold out here for two periods as Dalton with another backhand opportunity. Wrap around. Wrap around. The Parallel boys in the red pants are putting on a show here is number 16. Dalton Parallel. Dustin Parallel. Again. Dustin. Dalton number nine. Dustin number 16. Yellow Quill is up four to one here in the first 17 There's minutes Dustin, and 30 seconds. Dalen. And Dalton, say that fast. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> and then there's Dennis, who's not out there. Yeah. Crafty veteran. Good buddy of mine. Also a very successful indigenous entrepreneur. Entrepreneur as well. He's into, I yeah. uh, can't remember the name, but they do the uh, artificial, artificial grass. grass. And so he's sponsoring at the uh, SAS Place. They've been doing uh, a lot of work here in the Saskatoon area. You know, a lot of... Uh, Housing units, they do some yeah. of the people, uh, non-First Nations people, some of our own Indigenous people, but they they do their whole lawn with this artificial turf, yeah. it's artificial grass, so it's getting more and more popular. It's actually getting really popular. Yeah, right? like it's, it's you don't have to you don't have to it. You don't have to cut your grass. Another goal there by right. Parallet. But yeah, Dustin. so congratulations, Dennis. Yeah. I'm not sure uh, the name. We'll try to get the name of the, the it's company. JB, 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 something. I was just talking to him here. He messaged me yesterday on Snap, and I was talking to somebody at Info. 
But yeah, like I said, man, we always got to support indigenous business, whoever, wherever, right? Just always. Oh, even, you even know, talking it, to Dennis, yeah. it's, it's not a, it's not a lot of uh, indigenous customers that he has it's uh, more non-first yeah. nations customers yeah. so he said that's kind of his focus you know he doesn't mind doing the work for our nations but but you look a lot of it, them aren't really yeah. into the artificial well, that's grass what I was gonna say yeah. like, uh, uh, you can't take away grass burning season right yeah <laughs> that's a, that's a given that's probably one of my favorite seasons in april yeah you know what i'm out at the res there and i uh I like my grass. I like the smell of freshly cut grass. Oh, and I yeah. like taking care of my yard and stuff like that. Yeah, I can't true. really see myself like on the reds getting artificial grass. Yeah. You know what I mean? But in the city, it's a different story, right? Well, even they would use it for a power ground as well. Yeah. Power oh, ground, yeah. soccer field. I know uh, you guys, well, Big not River. Yours, or Big River did uh, artificial grass. They're just still working on, well, they have the power arbors done. And but they're working on their soccer, soccer pitch field, for the kids. Yeah. 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 So that one uh, is coming investing. along good. Investing in the community. Oh man. Good. They love soccer out there. Everything going well out there for Big River. Uh, especially, you know, they got three thousand uh, on reserve out there. So it's uh, really huge. I uh, talked earlier about uh, you know the Jim Nielsen facility that they have. And yeah. it's huge. You know, my daughter never really took to hockey, but uh, since having the ice out there and the hockey program, uh, she's really enjoying it. Yeah. And not only her, a lot of her peers and the younger kids. I went and watched and, you know, a lot of the young people, I would say, you know, they didn't have much structure in a hockey program. But now, man, they're, they're, they're looking good, especially yeah. the young girls. Uh, their hockey skills are coming a long ways there. And then, you know, there were some one-sided games. They had a lot of uh, tournaments and some of the city teams coming in and, but you know what? They're getting better. And this season, I noticed it's not really one-sided games. It's uh, some good hockey. A stick there goes Franklin. Air. No, that's not Franklin. That's uh, her last 16. With the quick goal. It is now Derek Beattie. Six to one for Yellow Quill. So this one might be over quicker than we thought there, folks. Christine Pachalas. Haha, <laughs> grass burning season. Yeah. Well, you know what? There was no snow all this time, and I noticed a lot of the, the local indigenous farmers were uh, doing the grass burning season right in the middle of winter. Year, and year it didn't work. Year-round burning grass. I was, going, I was going home there about a month ago, and boy, the whole field was lit up and <laughs> no danger to anybody because there's snow on the edge, a little bit anyway, a few inches, and grass burnt. And they're all ready for next farming season. This could be it here. Carol here walking in on the backhand. Looks like a Nathan Arias backhand is that one. It was not even close to the net. In my prime. What uh, what division did you play hockey till? Uh, midget. Midget, eh? Yeah. Typical story, you know, back in the day, started chasing girls, got the party scene. And, <laughs> that was, Typical. That was, that was it. A statistical story. And I was good, man. I was getting scouted by some dub teams. Huh? And, yeah, I was just, you know. You were decent. Yeah. We just like I said, man, just got caught up in it all, and you know. And then you ended up at the Saskatoon Tribal Council sub office. Yes, sir. Met, and met everybody uh, made a big <laughs> friendship with uh, a lot of the people you work with today. Yeah, and here we are today. But going back to that, uh, you know, girls hockey you're talking about. Yeah. I've noticed in the last three years how much of a boom it has had happened now, which is good because now you got uh, women hockey like in the NHL. But that, what do they call it? WNHL or something like that. Yeah. So they're now they're signing players. I know uh, there was Daniels there got signed too, didn't she? Yeah. A lot of Indigenous women there being, uh, you know, signed to those leagues, and it's showing that it's given a good path to these uh, young girls who strap on the the skates now and 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 get to play. Team this Canada's sport. Bridget Laquette of Cody First Nation, yeah. certainly a big uh, role model for the younger younger women out there, yeah. and. Uh, uh, it's, it's, but it's, now they have a lot of goals, right? Now they can now they can visualize goals of like Team Canada, the WNHL, the even the other leagues that are they're coming along. And a lot there's a lot of tournaments that are being created for just uh, women to play in. You betcha. I seen some of the women Huskies out here. You know, like we mentioned, they're all around the facility. But uh, you know, a couple of them are just yesterday on the side here. They're, I don't know where their workout room is. It must be somewhere on this end. But uh, they were out there and they had the skipping ropes out. And yeah. 
it's good, good exposure for our, our young women. They see it's uh, a lot of them getting to that age where they're going to be coming to university here too. Yeah. Taking on some of the sports, but hockey definitely yeah. Yeah. Uh, upcoming. And I think there's more opportunities right now for women's hockey uh, in the younger divisions, but also uh, in the professional, you know, there's uh, the people that are trying to team up here in Saskatoon and the province and trying to get some professional women's hockey going. So yeah. it's uh Huge strides. I remember back in the day, long ago, uh, from some of you older viewers out there, Manon Rayom was the first woman oh, yeah. to play Tampa for Bay. Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. So she Perfect. played in Nashville, as I mentioned before, with Dean Girard, who played for the Nashville Knights. He played for the Melford Mustangs. He tried out for the Raiders. Didn't make it. Was the last cut on the Raiders. And then him and a couple of the guys from Prince Albert there, uh, Scotty Rogers of Source for Sports helps out with the Senators Cup out there. He was uh, he went out to Nashville. Stefan Korfmat from Shelbrook, yep. PA boy. So all three of them went out there. And Mano Rayon was their goalie. And it was pretty neat to, nice. to meet her and take some photo ops. And she had her own security guys. And next thing, she was in the okay. NHL. First woman of the NHL. And that's kind of where yeah, everything started, uh, started growing. A lot of times, you know, in these... Oh, boys will go down and take the net off and we're going to get a whistle. You know, a lot of times the girls got to play with the men, uh, with the boys division. So I think uh, what it is, they get uh, a year up on them. If they're 14 year olds, the girls can be 15. Oh, really? Something like that. But uh, you know what? I've just had, I've had a vision right now and I can see us IOPS here live streaming an all female indigenous hockey tournament. Oh, definitely. Right? Very soon. Putting that out, manifesting it, you guys. That would be something to watch. Six to one. As Yellow Quill is looking to close this one out with one goal. Nine minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first. That is the mercy rule. Up by seven. Or sorry, I guess they need two more, eh? The Yellow Quill set up here on the power play. Six to one lead here over the Eagles. And that one just a little bit offside is Derek Beattie tries to reach for that blue line with his back leg. He doesn't make it. Cutler up. Who do we got on here? Tyler Job is out there for the PBC and Eagles. Good buddy of mine. Another entrepreneur. Yellow Quill for PBCN with the shot. Stop by Yellow Quill. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first. Yellow Quill leading by five. Seven yeah. is the golden number. Canoe Lake sending a message. You know what? On the uh, on the roster part of it, we're 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 going with the roster yeah. these managers are putting yeah. forward. So yeah. the message should be going to their managers, the Canoe Lake yeah. managers. So we got two different rosters from Canoe Lake. Both of them had all the numbers wrong. So we're going with the numbers they give us. They got to talk to their relatives and say, "Hey guys, get your best writer." Yeah, we know you guys have five uh, managers in that box. Whoever has their best writing or printing, do their rosters, get the numbers right. Yeah, you know, and we want to make sure that uh, the friends and relatives they see their relatives out here, they know who they're. Yeah. So you guys, yeah, if, uh, we are uh, calling a few names wrong. Please uh, correct us in the comments right away. Uh, like Cal said, we are going off with the managers give us on the roster. So once again, if you guys see us uh, calling a wrong name on a number on a team, correct us. Tyler Job is out there for Pelican number 10 on the defense. They're another entrepreneur, Tyler Job, number 10. He uh, runs a construction business out here in front. Actually invited me out to their Christmas party this year where, you know, he's been running his business for 10 years here. He's got a shop in town and they're pretty steady. And he's got a crew of, I think, at least 15 people that he employs. Really? What's yeah. his uh, company's name? Uh, I'm trying to think of the name here, but... Uh, Tyler's out there, and yeah, it was his first time in 10 years. He had a Christmas party for his company, for his boys, and he had a lot of prizes for them. But, you know, a little heartfelt speech on uh, behalf of him and uh, the good work that they're doing for him, and they do work out here in the city. 
He showed me his shop. Nice. Pretty awesome uh, outfit that he has, Tyler Jope. And uh, also, uh, they have a hockey team out here, too. They're called the Chihuahuans, which means what? Uh, the bros. And bros. My Chihuahuans, my, Chihuahuans. my buddy. Not two ups? Yeah, all of it. <laughs> the Chihuahuans. I ups will be having a Christmas party next, wagon. next year. IOPS. Yeah, we'll wait for the 10th year of us. <laughs> Don't be like Tyler. Make us wait a decade. Holy smokes. I was actually wanting to have one this year, mm. but... You're not to bring in Don Burnstick. You can't have a Christmas party and then put me to work. Right? <laughs> and I will, bro. He, he, will be, he, he will be the MC. <laughs> It'll be fun. Yeah, it was a uh, pretty good uh, Christmas season. I think I attended seven Christmas celebrations altogether. Last year, the year before, I did nine, I think. What? Yeah, remember that year? Oh, we were yeah. crashing party after party. I don't know why I said this year's year. I want to hit a bunch of Christmas parties. Yeah. Want even well, a few you know part practices. One we'll of go. ours for Muskeg in uh, Saskatoon here started uh, the last week of November. You know, just to fit everything in and things get busy, things exactly. like that. So worked out good. Worked out good. A lot of people come out. Yeah, because like November 12th is kind of when everyone just officially is in that spirit, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like, okay, go. Let's play Mariah Carey, all that crap. Not crap, all that music. All the good stuff. Yeah, all, all the good, good stuff. stuff. Keep it positive. I, I, I never meant to say that. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. Four minutes and 43 seconds left here in the first. Yellow Quill is up six to one. Did you decorate? Uh, Yeah. No. Are they still up? Yes. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Don't, take them, don't take them out. You good? Yeah. When do you, uh, when do you take your stuff down? Um, I mean, when does Carol and Gracie take the stuff down? <laughs> Carol and Gracie, they should have had it down a couple days ago. You know. uh, they'll probably take it down this week sometime. You're gone. You're gone all week. When we get back. When we get back. No rush. No rush. We like right. our uh, decorations. That's what the holidays is about. Chilling, relaxing. You know, wherever you guys are watching from. Some uh, might be even laying on a couch just with their phone. Oh, the tough thing there this year was uh, the no snow thing. Yeah, that was tough, man. It's huge because uh, well, a lot of people have skidoos, right? But there's there's two there's two ways to look at it right now, right? Right, great. Like I, I do admit, I miss the snow. I ain't gonna lie, I miss yeah. it, man. Like you don't think you do? I know. But man, this weather is just it's it's such a nice vibe right now. But I know we need it because of it's dry out there. Like yeah. even the ponds Moisture. are all empty. They're not even there's no yeah. no water in them. So I do hope we do get a, a massive snowstorm. I invested. In like I invested March. in a. Uh... Uh, like an older skidoo. Yeah. Because of all the wasp nests and all that, they were all like sky high, 12, 14 feet in the air. So I thought, okay, well, that means there's going to be a lot of snow. Good idea. I'm going to capitalize. Nothing. No snow. I already knew there wasn't going to be. I knew we were going to have a, a warm warm season this year. Why? Farmer's Almanac. The Weather Network. Oh. <laughs> no, they're calling it La Nina. Oh, like really? The last time, do you remember in like 97, 98? That's the last time we had a brown Christmas. Oh, what's El Nina? El Nina, I think, is the opposite of La Nina. I thought it was El Nino. No, El Nino and then La Nina. La Nina. Guy goes to Mexico more. once, guy knows Spanish. Right? La Nina. <laughs> La Nina. Now you're getting me all mixed up. La Nina is warm. I don't know what it means. I just know that it's supposed to be warm. Oh, okay. El Nino is like, Watch out. It'll be rank weather. Really? Correct me if I'm wrong and everyone watching and listening in, but I'm pretty sure. Wow, well, you know what? Is. I always, I noticed the last. That's a great words from Willis John V. Ten, ten years. Yeah, Willis John v. Google. <laughs> Google work. Unless Google. it's a, like if you're feeling ill, don't go to Google because they'll give you all the worst scenarios, symptoms. Actually go to the doc. Got an update from uh, Corey watching on his projector. Atta boy. Oh, there's another big goal there from the Yellow Quill Warriors. 
Seven one here with time winding down in the first. This one might not make the second period, but there's always hope. It's got a message. Message. Christine Patalis is sending us a message yeah, saying they are looking for a female hockey tournament. Oh, no, they're in... hosting. Oh, they're hosting. Yeah, they're hosting a female hockey tournament in January. Cool. Girls play with warm and wild cats. Send us 18. a poster. Let's uh, get some promotions going here for the young ladies. What's the age division? Uh, Christine, what's the age division? If you're watching still there, let us know. Yeah, like I said, man, women's hockey, it's getting bigger. Up well, by six right now, Yellow Quill needing one more, and Warman needing one to keep this game going. here, and there's a shot on it. Now one's going to sail <laughs> to the right side. Warman in the mix here. Now must be the res part of Warman. <laughs> Pound side Warman. Oh, oh, move there, Par my paralyzed. Paralyzed using my toe drag move. <laughs> now a little spin around me here. I'm trying to seal the deal with 29 seconds left. They get a shot on that. One of the boys in the red pants, Paralette, is he's going to fumble that one and looks like PBCN going to make... Oh, Paralette upended there by Derek Beatty and the ref all over that one. Suspect call there by our officials is Beatty. Going to go to the penalty box for three minutes. Oh, he turned around. He said, no, I'll go later. That's the end of the first. Yellow Quill leading by six. PBCN Eagles. Not their best showing here. No. Coming up next here, you guys, we have take a picture of that. Let's see who's next. Oh, I missed that one. I don't know what game we're showing next. I'll have to go and look at that updated one. Unless someone in the comments knows who's playing on the uh, rink here. What you can do, Nathan, rink? you can give out a promo code and somebody can come and get uh, one of these nice IOP swag. You know what Nathan did this year, guys? It's fan appreciation. Inspired by myself, spirit of giving, and Nathan jumped all over here. it. We're all IOPS out. Give us a code if you can come up and say these words. Nathan Arias rocks. You get any <laughs> swag you want you from go. IOPS. We have a bunch of different IOPS colors. rocks. Not IOPS, IOPS rocks. Rocks. IOPS, IOPS rocks. rocks. Yep. If you if you heard the first one, both of them work. Nathan Arias rocks and IOPS rocks. Come on up here. Any of you guys that are in the facility in the neighborhood, come and see us. These yeah. are uh Cree Syllabics, IOPS. Gus Kahio and meet success. Success. Come and check it out, guys. Free swag going out here. Nathan Arias rocks or IOPS rocks. And you we're gonna get be, yourself. We're gonna be making new t shirts here that we have the logo there and it's Nathan yeah. really goes out and beyond to do these and uh, any of the events that uh, people hire us to come and highlight. Uh, you know, this guy's giving out steady gifts now. This is the main mainstay is part of uh, the production. You get us, you get uh, your event live across North America and you also yeah. the swag, you know, Nathan out of goodness of his heart, promoting his own company, but also giving back a little bit too. So thank you for that, Nathan. You do rock. Thanks, brother. It's all. It's always a pleasure to uh, come and do these, man. You know, I know it all started off with uh, just uh, podcasting and Chief Tanya Stone of Mosquito inviting me during the pandemic to uh, showcase one of their band meetings because you know, no one could attend. And that's kind of how it started. And I always tell, tell uh, Chief Tanya, I thank you. You know, it's, uh, you know, it kind of started it off and she still hired me for events and a lot of, you know, now it's grown and, you know, now we're doing tournaments and Every All event stuff, you can yeah. think of, yeah. conferences, yeah. Uh, we've done elections, we've done powwows, yeah. you know, a uh, big one there and a huge shout out to uh, Mitzwing, Patrick Mitzwing, yeah, having it's... us out there with, uh, you know, in collaboration with, uh, uh, we were working Red with Deer. Red Deer, but the company. 
Shaw, Shaw Cable. And then Rogers. So live. It was live on yeah. Shaw Cable. This year was Rogers. Yeah, this year was Rogers. But it was live throughout Red Deer. Part of reconciliation, too. To, uh, oh, it share. was on Shaw Cable. Like, last year was on Shaw, so it was, like, across everywhere. Wherever, oh, really? Yeah, wherever Shaw was playing. They had we, the power in Red Deer. Yeah. Wow. We were, like, I had, peop I had people uh, calling that saying that they were uh, watching it from the States. It was, like, too deadly. Look at that. Franklin Cook, number 12 for PBC and Eagles. Gets it to go and keeps the strive alive. And now 7-2 to two on the goal by number 12, the defenseman. Franklin Cook scores. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. And even like Shaw and uh, those guys, they were pretty impressed with us out there. And well, so, it, it goes to show Patrick too. He's a visionary, right? Big shout out to Patrick Mitzwing and his wife, Marissa Mitzwing. Uh, he's a visionary. He's a one that likes to just step up and go for it and try. And, you know, if it fails, whatever, but you know, at least he tried and he learns from it, you know, as now I think they are going to be moving. What I heard is that they're going to be moving to, uh, Thailand or somewhere in Asia for a couple months. And, but he's got a lot of projects going on, that guy. He's got so much going on. You know, he's one of them, uh, uh, I guess even mentors, like the younger guys, should, younger people should watch to see what it really takes to keep pushing yourself every day. He's also a very successful Indigenous entrepreneur, a uh, very successful uh, champion dancer. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know. He, he just, he's got such a good vibe about him, man, everything. So big shout out to him and all he's done. Yeah, we've been out there for two years here. Looking forward to going back to Red Deer. And uh, that one's a very, uh, it's a little different organized uh, powwow, but it's, everything is on time and, you know, right down to the grand entries. And so everything it's just uh, it works well out there in Red Deer. It's a good example for a lot of gatherings. You know, it's it's always nice to have all different kinds of specials and things like that. But it, in an orderly fashion, where you know people know they have that expectation, what's on, what's happening, and that's how that power is run very well. You know, last few powers have been going out to uh, the agendas have been putting out, and they've actually been sticking to them and yep. you know on times, which is good, man. Big shout out to all the communities that have hired IOPS to broadcast their uh, POWs. Very much appreciated. Uh, it's it's always an honor to come in there into the circle and, and uh, actually learn every time I go in there. So it's good. Yeah, if you need to contact IOPS.ca, what's the best way to do it, Nathan? Uh, Nathan.Arius at IOPS.ca. Just go to IOPS.ca. You can see all the con contact information there. So, uh, you know, now's your time, I guess, uh, leading up into spring here. Uh, book, book your event, whatever it may be. Yep. You know, talk with Nathan, book the event. I know he's been booking up uh, different events here and some of them are annual events. So yep. that, that takes time. And, uh, sooner you book, the better. Just like anything else. And it's also good, like he's telling everyone that, you know, we got Cal here and uh, Willis, and we also have the weenie cousins are Cherish and Asti. But everyone's kind of, you know, I, I, I find people that are, you know, having fun online and, you know, bring that extra um, connection, I guess you can say, to online. Like you see when we people are in the comments here. Walking in is Parlett. Now one kicked aside here is Keegan Henderson finding his groove here in the second period as PBCN Eagles have scored the only goal here in the second part of this game. And the red pass of the Parlett boys are trying to get things going again. Quick fake there. Another shot. That one was high and a little bit to the right side of Henderson. Safely away from the net as the Eagles are coming out. Not sure who plays next, Corey. We're going to be doing an updated uh, draw here. Parallel now. Faking a shot and then letting it go low. And that one kicked aside again by Henderson. Eagles finding a little room on the far side, but now losing the puck. Parallel once again. Dustin looking in, moving. And that one's at the back of the net. Eight to two. Yellow Quill. Number 16, I'll score his hat trick for the hockey game. It's got to have at least four. Our number nine scored 
a couple times, eh? Are they brothers or cousins? Uh, I think they're brothers. Yeah. Cousin to Dennis. And so I'm not sure about the other one. There is a mercy rule there, Corey. Seven. One Corey Arcan chiming in, got the projector going, but one That's... of those games where, you know, the clock gets slow, the score is eight to two. You're trying to get that <laughs> extra goal, and the more you wish that extra goal would come, the other team scores another one and stretches that game out the distance. Yeah, but we're here regardless to uh, cheer on everybody. And uh, once again, another nice little tournament here organized uh, by James Smith, like you said, over the holidays. and I give some people to do because a lot of people honestly don't have a clue what to do. And I'm one of them over the holidays. You know, you got the holidays coming up and you're like, what are you going to do? I don't know. Like, relax. Yeah. At least this gives something uh, for everyone to do, uh, either whether you're attending here or... Uh, or just watching online. You definitely, just... definitely. And the, the thing is, too, with uh, this tournament here, you got both rinks, right, side by yeah. side, and 30 teams yeah. or more with the three divisions that they have here. One of the notables I seen yesterday here on rink number one would be the Beardies Legends team. Uh, so long ago, these guys were a powerhouse team back in their youth with Billy Cameron and these guys. And uh, it's the same team that's playing here. And they had a good game yesterday. So they're probably a top contender there uh, looking to take down the 35 plus division. So keep an eye on those guys. Again, Nathan's going to post the draws here uh, as soon as we get a break here after this game. And uh, so everybody will be up to speed on which games are happening, which games we're going to be. Yes. Putting here on iops.ca. Just an update at the Ramada tonight. It was a hockey cabaret. It was on last night and as well tonight. Armin Duck Chief and DJ, is it XL? XL. XL at the Ramada. Doors open at 9 and it goes till 1 a.m. $10 entry fee. Must be 19 years old. Arm and duck chief. So put on your boots and your buckles and boots, scoot, cowboy hats. I follow him on Snapchat, man. He's uh, Armin. Yeah, he does a uh, does a lot, man. He's a singer, dances powwow. He was what? Yeah, he was. I didn't know Armin danced powwow. Yeah, he dances. I think he dances chicken. What? The heck? Heck? Yeah, and then he uh, he was the counselor at Six of Car. I don't know if he still is or not, but the guy was like all over the place, man. Busy man. Country singer, powwow, politician. And he's a cowboy. Reminds me of somebody I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> Country phenom. <laughs> That's pow. Muskeg phenom. <laughs> Born and bred. Oh, yeah, the Red Pheasant is also playing here. I don't know how they did yesterday. The Red, there's two Red Pheasant teams. There's the Red Pheasant Rebels, of course. The the main the, the main crew. Oh, the Outlaws. That's right. Yeah. The Outlaws. Which team is here? I didn't even check. I'm assuming it's the Outlaws. The Outlaws or the other team. Just like you were saying before, like sometimes uh, you know, there's no room for you on that. Uh, one team, even though you are good, me create another team. Always room, you except know? for only thing is uh, I retired now. Parallels, their brothers and the nephews to Dennis. Oh, okay. Ah, thank Dustin. you, Barry. Dustin. Dustin was the Dustin one who played, played with Moose Jaw. Yeah. Okay. okay, and the Saskatoon Blades. Yes, thank you. And Dustin's lighting it up here <laughs> this afternoon here with that was number sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember watching Dennis's. Facebook and Snap all the Dalen, time. Dalen, Dustin, uh, Dustin, and Dalton. The three D's of the Parallettes and Uncle Denny. Uncle Denny. A little bit of tidbit information there for you. A lot of stories on each team. Average Joe's gym. That's what their jerseys Average were. Average Joe. Average Joe's. That was their, they had the. Is that thing still open? Average Joe? I don't know, but the hockey team was the Parallett boys. I know that they had those jerseys. They were like, uh, you know, dodgeball, yeah. average Joe's gym. That's what their jerseys. What are the five D's? Five D's of dodgeball? Yeah. Dodge, duck, dive, duck, and dodge. No, you said <laughs> I don't know. Dodge, duck, dive, 
Dodge Duck Dial. That's all I got. And I think they used Dodge twice, though. Do they? Let us know in the comments, you guys. Where are the five Ds at Dodgeball? Get yourself an IOP swag <laughs> if you know the five Ds. As the great Willis John May would say, nobody. It. I don't think nobody in the the house here. Nobody came for IOP swag. Yes, IOPs rocks. IOPs or rocks Nathan is the key Arias word. rocks. You get free swag up here. Some nice stuff up here. All colors, all styles. Long sleeve, short sleeve. You guys get to choose. You get to choose. Nobody's, uh, you know, for the Canoe Lake game. Well, Canoe Lake fans are something else. They're a different breed. But, you know, these guys are, uh, they're always listening. They come and got a lot of prizes there yesterday. They, it, it was good to see. They're in here watching. It, that, plus, they're all watching it, live. I was going to say that's good to see, man. Because it's nice that you get to hear play by play, eh? Dodge, duck, dip, dive, oh, and dip dodge. Oh, dip is my ad is. There we go. Jordan Cardinal. I'm going to get your free dodge, swag. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Send a representative <laughs> there, Jordan Cardinal. If you know anybody at the rink, say, I'm yeah. here for Jordan Cardinal yes. swag. Yes. Five Ds of dodgeball. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> we got to use that on a play-by-play. He dodges, he ducks, he dips, he dives. Dodge, duck, dodge. dip, dive, and dodge. That's uh, You ever play dodgeball? Ah, I was deadly because I'm all arms and legs, buddy. Just before the pandemic, uh, there was a tournament in North Balfour, and uh, our reserve put one in, man. Oh, no. Dodgeball tournament. IOPS dodgeball tournament. We there you go. There you go. Up. There you guys are hey. here. We're going to have one. But now. wait, one of the things I do wanted to do, I've always wanted to do for the longest time, because my mom, she loves listening to music and a lot of the amateur music. I want to have an IOPS idol. Okay. IOPS Idol, you guys. Okay, Stay tuned to that. It is going to happen. Dodgeball tournament is on. IOPS Idol and Dodgeball. IOPS Dodgeball. Co ed Dodgeball. Yeah. Live we on the get Ocho. Some, we could probably get some good sponsors for that. If you play by play, right? I love it. I love it. That would be fun, man. That actually would be fun. Jordan Cardinal will expect start, you to be putting in a team. Jordan, start uh, start recruiting for uh, fundraising for unis <laughs> and names. Watch the show Dodgeball and get some ideas, guys. Yeah. Except for those leather outfits, those are a little suspect. Uh, <laughs> could be kids at the event. Dodgeball tournament brought to you by way of iops.ca. You heard it here first, live at the James Smith Strong and Resilient Hockey Championships. Is this one's winding down to the eleven twenty eight minute mark of the final period? And the question on everybody's mind: Have your dodgeball at Winterfell? I can't, Corey. You know that would be good, but uh, I'll be uh, I'll be uh, live streaming the hockey tournament, the basketball tournament as well. No facility. The, uh, volleyball tournament. No, it's got to be it's one on its own. Yeah, it's got to be on its own. The dodgeball tournament. Don't worry, Corey. You'll be working at I was the just, dodgeball I was tournament. Just, yeah. <laughs> you could be the official. Yeah, we need someone who would know the rules. Well, we got to make the rules. Indigenous rules. Eight to two. Yellow Quill looking to put it away with 10 minutes and 45 seconds remaining. IOPS. Second. IOPS is going to put dodgeball back on the map. It's happening. It's officially happening, brother. I think we're talking about the five Ds for a reason. That's a that's a fun one. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, dodge. Live on IOPS. It's the annual, first annual IOPS dodgeball Dude, championship. I'm excited. I'm excited. Need an IOPS trophy. Oh, man. Be fun. It's going to be fun. But yeah, stay tuned for those IOPS Idol. The, uh, the Muskeg Lake Purple Cobras. Man, maybe that could be like uh, the whole event. Dots. <laughs> the Dodge and the Idol at the same time. Eh? Yeah. Be long, long days for us, us broadcasters, but I think it would be worth it. A lot of uh, Paralad looking for his fifth goal of the hockey game. If he can, he's walking in here now. Red Pats, a fa fan on that puck, gets it out in front. Now Pelican, Eagles pick up the puck here on a two-on-two -two situation as 
The speed of this game has slowed somewhat here with nine miles left and some change. Only headshots allowed. Indian rules. Lionel Manitoukin. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel, a five-time dodgeball championship in the White Buffalo days. Yeah. White Buffalo used to dodge. Lionel also one of uh, one of the many indigenous journeyman carpenters. Oh. Well, and that one's going to stretch this game out here. The Eagles have tallied one up here by way of number 19, in which we don't have his name. Maybe we do. The original roster, he doesn't. But let me have a look here. On the new roster, that is Joshua Beatty gets on the score sheet. Eight to three here now. There, Corey Arcan. Sounds like this one's going to go the distance. Yes. Not a shot on that. There's Henderson blockers that away out of danger. Again, front parallel looking, shooting, and stopped by Henderson. The brothers and nephews to Dennis Dustin played in Moose Jaw and as well as the Saskatoon Blade. Eight to three. And eight minutes on the clock, chipping away. They've scored three goals this period. And trying to climb back into this one. They need another five goals in eight minutes. Not unheard of in any hockey game. I just say anything can happen in any hockey, man. It's uh, a lot of time to tie the game and take the lead. Hey, Eagles. Making the Parallel Boys work here. And uh, the rest of the Yellow Quill Boys. There's not only the parallettes out there. They got a team out there. They got uh, Cantry, Hodgson's out there. Marshall Hodgson, Cole Pucci, and Tristan Pucci, number 27, number 55. And also Jason Pucci, number 21, out there for Yellow Quill. Back here in uh, Yellow Quill territory as they move it on up. They're looking to restore that six-goal lead to shut her down at seven. Yellow Quill fighting strong, though, doing good. Oh, sorry, Marshall PBCN. Hodgson there, number 15. There's Franklin Cook now, number 16, as he'll throw that in uh, front here, and they'll come on a breakaway. Shoots. That one oh. picked up by the goalkeeper. Joey, my two nephews, Dalton and Dustin, they are Ralph Daniel Jr.'s sons. Ralph Daniels, nice. I know Ralph. He's to DJ for us there out at the Senators Cup Hockey Tournament. And Ralph Daniels, boy, he makes good hockey players. Dalton and Dustin. Yellow Quill wins the draw. Back in their end. PBCN pressuring. Passes in front with the shot. Goals wide. Eagles, a couple opportunities here. Now coming the other way here is uh, Yellow Quills, number 55. Cole Pucci. Pucci now down low, picks up the puck there. He's got Franklin Cook with him chasing, and now three Eagles on Pucci. And now a long pass that finds its... Recipient there down low, and here we go. The youngster walking in. There's a shot now onto the top shoulder there of the goalkeeper. Checking this uh, young fellow oh, out here, you number me? eleven. I'm here gonna say it must be a yellow goal. Number eleven. If anyone knows how old he is on Yellow Quill, we don't have him on the roster. Yeah, looks pretty young, but he's got some wheels. He's got some hands. They got about six guys on the roster with no numbers, so. Yeah. I'm going to say that kid's 15, maybe 14. So he's playing pretty good. Number 11, you guys, if you guys know who he is on Yellow Quill, looks pretty young, but he's a good hockey player. Reminds me of my prime days. 
with the shot. They got a couple, a couple of youngsters out there. Given the boys, the older. That's for Pelican. They're for Pelican. So number eleven. That's no. That's not Dustin Job. Could number be. number eleven on Yellow Quill. No, that's number eleven on PBCN uh, Eagles. Or sorry, PBCN. Yeah, sorry, PBCN. Oh, I don't know why I'm always saying that. Okay. <laughs> 16 here. Uh, BBCN moving it on up. Derek Beatty. Oh, oh, the big guy coming in hot. And defenseman there. Uh, Pierlet moving it around. Moves it on up. That piss. That piss. That pass is missed. <laughs> I was just telling Cal, man, I really felt my age yesterday, last night after going to the hotel. Man. You know what? the Shambo Lake Eagles. The yeah, but name. who is the uh, number 11 player? Oh. On, mine, Young on, guy. My, on my roster, it says Dustin Joe, but I'm not sure. Pretty that's young. Just want to know how old he is. And let's see. No, that's Tommy Job. Tommy Job? Tommy Job, his name is. Yeah, I'm going to say about 14, 15, but he's playing pretty good. Little Tommy. Yeah. But yeah, you guys, a lot. You know, people don't understand how, how much energy and it's taxing on your body here when you're up here doing this play by play and this broadcasting. Man, because you're putting in long days. Like yesterday, we were here at 8 a.m., we didn't leave the ring till 11. And we're here again, again for another 12, 12 hours. So it's probably a walk in a park oh, for a lot of uh, the hot shot marks. by Franklin. Cooked the length of the ice and right on the mark here, kicked aside by the goalkeeper. Yellow Quill with the shots. Eight to three with two miles to go here. As the rink is filling up and they got the hardware up the corner, looks like a lot of silver cups up there for the champions. MVPs, best defenseman, best forward, top goal scorer, things like that. Did you ever win any? Well, hell yeah. Did you? I never won any most sportsman like trophies in my life. I did once, but my dad made me leave it at the at the <laughs> tournament in the dressing room and said, what are you doing with that? Leave it here. We don't win those. Uh, it was a long time ago. I'm sure my dad uh, thinks differently nowadays, but most sportsmen like <laughs> wasn't one of the things the Arcan boys took home, apparently. And then one time I had a bad knee. I was playing with Muskeg and we were pretty good. So we were always like making the money and a little financially embarrassed that time. So I was like, I suited up. Because I thought, well, the worst case scenario, I'm going to get into a fight and I'll get kicked out anyway. Yeah. So I went. It was at Sass Health Center. And we were playing canoe. And, and freaking this fun canoe lake here. I won't say his name, but we went in there, in the corner. My knee was weak. I went in there and, man, he just mugged me really badly. Cuffed me and mugged me. And I had to go off the ice. And I, I couldn't go after him or nothing because my knee was that bad. And I went off and then... So intermission time there, they're cleaning the ice, and my dad comes around and said, hey, where's Cal? Bring him out here. Boy, give me an airflow. I said, don't you ever pull that again. What the hell is that? I'm sitting up in the stands with two brown bags over my head in case one <laughs> falls off. I embarrassed him that time, so couldn't do nothing about it. Best ref in Onion Lake. Remember, Cal? Yeah, so I'm in the refing business now. I'm actually retired as an active player in, in any league because of... Uh, injuries and things like that but you know i'm uh, healthy enough to ref so uh lenny took me under his wing lenny mccollum and uh yeah it's good it's you know uh it's not living the refing dream it's uh, helping out a lot of us need refs a lot of the young people my son is now a referee too and he never thought he would do it and he kind of made me laugh he's like dad not everybody wants to live the refing dream 
but it helps out in the communities. You know, yeah. you always need those refs. And now he's enjoying it. He's refereeing for the little guys. And it, he's it brings got the... a lot more uh, prestige to the game. You, know? you betcha. Yeah. You betcha. But uh, we're going to cut her short here. One last comment, Sheila Mike. Listening to the commentary is like listening to the Don and Ron show. Cal being Don. Every time the other guy starts talking, Cal cuts him off. <laughs> No doubt, eh? No doubt. Thanks for hey, calling hey, it out, Hey, Shana. hey, uh, Nathan, that's enough from you. Hey, we're live at the James Smith Arena here. James Smith Hockey Resilient Tournament here in Saskatoon. Mayor's Belcher, we're going to be right back here with iops.ca bringing you the play-by-play. Wish that's...